All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in, and please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell. Really helps this small channel grow. So, <clears throat> this morning we're here in the greenhouse. It is, um, it's been cold at night and around in the high 60s during the day. So, we have still been getting down to the 30s at night, uh, and I still have been heating the greenhouse. I want to show what I've got with the seedlings because honestly, <clears throat> some of them are big enough to transplant out. But I've just got to be careful um, with how I'm doing it and um, if they're going to get too cold. The raised beds are against the house, so I think that'll help. Um, <clears throat> let's check out what we've got growing on. The morning sun is touching the seedlings, as you probably see. Let me just flip this. So yeah, the morning sun gets the seedlings really good. Uh, <clears throat> you see we've got the beans, we've got the scallop squash, the arugula, two rows of carrots, kale in the middle rows, and broccoli on the two end rows. <clears throat> Everything has come up. We've had 100% germination. We also saved a lot of seed for next year, so... These are our watermelons coming up. Um, actually, this is much, way too much watermelon than we can actually <clears throat> handle. But the family loves watermelon, and I figured, you know, let's just plant all the seeds because they were having fun. So we planted a whole flat of watermelon. Um, I believe there is some cucumber plants in there as well because I always grow some cucumber. Uh, so, yeah, this stuff, I'm thinking I'm going to do, since it's still cold at night and our last frost date is not till April 14th or 15th, I think what I'm going to do is thin out, um, about half of these plants that are on this tray and put them outside and... So if they make, and, and I'll put them in the beds and plant them. And if they make it, then that means we had an early spring and very, very mild frost and it didn't damage them. And so we're going to get crops probably a month ahead of time, at least. Uh, and if they don't make it, I will still have a good amount of crops to transplant out when the uh, time is for sure right. Now I am itching to get some tomatoes in. That is the one thing that... I'm usually, <clears throat> I usually always have my tomatoes first. This year, um, we have not been focusing on the tomatoes. I guess in my mind, I kind of think, well, <clears throat> we do tomatoes every year. So, of course, we're going to do tomatoes because they do self-seed and come back in certain areas uh, of the yard. But I'm not going to focus on actually, like, getting them started and baby them in the greenhouse just yet um not till we got our other plants established so our fig cuttings are looking great um i usually just give these away uh as gifts and stuff and pot them up separately um but i am thinking about starting a line of <clears throat> fruit trees on the side of my house um, and I'm not going to buy anything. I'm just going to um, do all cuttings. And I think they'll be even healthier that way. Just because there'll be stock that I bred on this land. Um, and it's always been here in this part of the world. So I think they'll grow stronger that way. And my neighbor um, <clears throat> cut down a huge false cherry tree opening up sun to um, the entire back half of my yard, which was previously a full shade area, um, very mature tree that they cut down. So we've got to have plans with that. Um, I previously had planted all shade shrubs in the area, which have grown in very nicely. But now I'm thinking <clears throat> um, we're going to do extend it out a little bit and do fruit trees there as well. You can see the Buddha's hand. <clears throat> Buddha's, Buddha's hand or Buddha's fingers. Um, 
I cannot ever remember which one, but it's got a flower on it. Hopefully this one actually develops and stays. Um, it has developed open and opened here in the greenhouse, so it's it has not been moved. So I think we have a good chance there. Um, got some new growth on it. I am going to get... I think it's not holding its fruit because it's not happy enough. It's just in a peat moss mixture. I need to get some actual citrus mix. Um, and as much as I preach to do things as cheaply as possible, the longer you garden... <coughs> Excuse me, let me take a sip of water here. Okay, I'll turn it on myself with the seedlings in the background. So, so I find... I try to do things cheaply, so I buy the big peat moss and then perlite separate, make my own soil and stuff like that. But the more years you have in gardening, you actually realize that if I bought the more expensive stuff and my plants were happier, I would have got a harvest fruit or vegetable sooner. And that is actually worth money because I buy that stuff from the grocery store for god awful high prices. So it makes perfect sense to actually put the investment in your plants up front, have them be super happy and healthy, bountiful, give you a harvest, and then save money in the end. Um, kind of like an investment. Like if you were investing in stocks, you wouldn't invest in a bad stock and expect it to give you any return, you know? So invest in a good stock in gardening, get high quality, um, not even high quality, but just get what that specific plant needs. So that's a Buddha's hand or Buddha's finger, um, rare citrus tree. It is a citrus, so it needs a citrus mix to create that bountiful harvest and give me the fruit that I need. So kind of work with the plant, know each specific plant, and then give it exactly what it needs. Now with Jabba de Kaba, it kind of works out. Um, and a lot of these other rare plants, uh, even loquat, doesn't mind it. They love being grown in just peat moss and perlite. And then, of course, you have to fertilize because uh, that mixture has no nutrition at all. So then you just follow, fertilize with an organic holiton. So each specific plant will have a specific need um, that you're going to have to fill. And it's super fun because you get to know your plant. It's like, it's like getting to know a person. And then when you're out, um, you know, either you're out in nature or even in the city, anywhere where there's plants, you, it's like you have friends around because you're one of the few people that can identify those plants that you got to know out in the wild. So you can identify, um, you know, say you see a maple tree, you say, oh, that's a maple tree. Now, that's a common one. Say you see a... Uh, uh, a ginkgo tree it's a very sacred tree um you can identify it so and then it's like um it gives you a boost uh, of like you feel like you're more connected to the natural world because as you go about and exist in the natural world you um you literally know <clears throat> the stuff that's growing around you uh, and that's keeping you alive. So, um, on my land alone, I was doing a little count the other day. I've planted just trees. I've planted, um, well over 60, uh, shrubs, plants, and everything else. It's hundreds, um, just on my land. Uh, and it's very small. So it's a suburban lot. <clears throat> when you think about it, how many how I've planted that much. Um, now, the, the lot is very unique. Um, it does have some woodland. It's kind of a unique lot to have in suburbia, um, which is one of the reasons I, I got it. But um, the reason I plant all those things is to become closer and more connected with nature and ultimately to sequester carbon um, in the soil and to um, help restore the earth. So stop erosion and give off oxygen and take in CO2 in the atmosphere and just kind of make me a healthier person all around. So 
and anyone really because I have a lot of people that pass the yard uh, and it really inspires them <clears throat> you can see it in their eyes they'll walk by the yard and they'll just be locked in they'll they'll just look at they're just staring at the yard because I, I believe every person has something in them that when they see like plants and and stuff growing and, and going well they have like the spark of like wow you know like i should do that or i remember that when that was just a grass just a just a boring yard of grass and i thought it would never change kids used to ride their bikes on it you know it was just grass which is is literally giving back the smallest amount of it's sequestering the smallest amount of carbon and giving off the least amount of oxygen than any plant i hate grass okay i always have hated grass uh ultimately because <clears throat> Why have a grass field? Think about this. Why have a grass field for kids to play in when you could have a food forest with mulch ships, trees, <clears throat> and plants all around for them to forage in? So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to go far to find nature when you, you have something like that connected to your actual yard that you own, so you have control over it. Um, and you're really making that difference. So if I wanted to leave anyone with anything today to take away, it would definitely be that uh, the, the best and easiest thing you can do uh, for your happiness is to garden every day, honestly. Uh, even if you don't like gardening, I don't, I don't really care because gardening is in our physiology it's in our genome. It's part of who we are. So you may not think, oh, you know, gardening. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, your body and your mind, soul, and spirit is actually connected to that soil. So even though you might not think up in the forefront of your mind that you like it, trust me, when you get your hands in that dirt and you feel <clears throat> that you have grown something from nothing, it's going to connect with something on a much deeper level um on a level that is is going to connect your mind body and soul so if you can do anything to improve yourself it'd be gardening number one um and this year we're going deep on veggies because you never want to forget about the stuff that's going to really feed your family it's, it's going to be like a grocery store items you would buy, uh, fun and, and exciting it's because it's for the season and it gives, it gives the season a purpose, you know, so get out there and grow as much as you can this season. Even if you have a small space, just as big as this greenhouse, a four by, this is a four by six so it's only four feet this way this way to this way and six this way uh wide so it's yeah um it's small so maybe you have a balcony like this right maybe you have a balcony like this on the back of your apartment this is how my apartment balcony used to look actually just fill the apartment balcony with plants you feel better about it in the end and then you have stuff to eat Let's see what temperature. Okay, we're coming in at above 60, uh, 61, which is great. Um, we're going to probably crack a window and get a fan going in here. But thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe. Um, I hope you got some some wisdom and some, some good uh, inspiration out of it. And I hope you get out there and plant something today. You know, no matter what it is or how your day is going, uh, trust me, if you plant something or you, you garden it all, it will make you feel better. So, um, everyone just have a great day and continue watching the videos. Thank you for subscribing and keep growing. I'll leave you with the seedlings with the morning sun shot. 
Only God knows what the thumbnail might be. All the videos are just straight raw footage. Uh, YouTube just picks the thumbnail, so someday we'll get into editing, but imagine if you were a small ant. This would already be like a forest walking through here. I used to love videos like this. It's like like ant's life or bug's life or something. Very cool. Very cool shot. So, all right. Everyone keep growing. Thank you. Bye-bye.